morning, brothers and sisters. It is good to be together on this uh, first Sunday after the Ascension. So I invite you all to stand and prepare for worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen. Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. <coughs> A reading from the book of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord.
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 1, and we will say it together. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong in the world, just as I do not belong in the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. Now it's on. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Some reason I, I thought I had pushed that switch and I failed. During this 10-day uh, window that we're in right now between Ascension Day last Thursday and Pentecost next Sunday, there's this strange time when we remember that there was at least a uh, a moment or a 10-day period which Jesus was not present to the disciples, or at least they were not able to tell that God was anywhere near them. When that happens, it is a scary thing. Today's collect says, Lord, do not leave us comfortless. And yet that's exactly how we can sometimes feel, comfortless, like, God, I, I know you're there, I hope you're there, but I can't tell you're there. Please give me some kind of sign that you are present. After Jesus' death on the cross, his disciples grieved the loss of him, but just three days later, he was clearly present again. They loved it. But now they're back again in this place of loss. After the resurrection, Jesus with, with his disciples for 40 days, but then he ascends into heaven, and what, what are they to make of this? Uh, is he just going away from them? Do they experience him as absent? Starting at that moment, God is absent from our lives in a new way. But starting on the day of Pentecost, God will be present to us in a new way too, with the sending of the Holy Spirit. Feeling alone or being alone is not the normal state of things for us. We believe in a God who is present, even if in different ways. So this is hard stuff. I believe the life of Jesus shows us what it looks like to be in the world, but not to belong to it. So how does that work? It means things like, I can buy a new car when I really need one, but not act like this car defines who I am. 
I can work hard at my job, but without thinking that I derive my identity completely from what I do. I am a priest, I am a stockbroker, whatever. The recent time of COVID-related isolation and unemployment has been very hard in a lot of ways, but it's also given us a chance to challenge the notion that we are what we do. When we're not working, we discover that our work is not all of who we are. When in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, what do we think that means? I'm afraid that at this point in time, we see heaven as very far away. It means, God, you're not here, you're in some other world. That's not what Jesus meant by our Father in heaven. I think Jesus was really talking about his notion that God was just high enough that God could see everything in our world. In a way, being in heaven meant that God was more connected than ever. Not in a heavenly refuge, but present with us now. I think talking about a God who's in heaven um, could be misleading. We need to let the world know that we Christians believe in a God who really is present to us. I think something like this must be our goal, too, to live so deeply connected with the world and caring about what happens here, but ultimately to have our identity not come from the world, but be God's gift to us. Jesus' parting words to his disciples is told in John's Gospel today, say that we do not belong to this world, but that we are sent into this world to display God's truth and love here. What a job that is, <laughs> but it is real. How else are people going to learn what God wants and what God is all about than by watching and living with us? So this may be our task for the months ahead, to look at what we're doing and how we're living and ask if this is the best vision people get of what God's up to in the world, what will they think? What will they learn? What sort of image of God will they have? Well, this is a daunting responsibility, but it is real. Brothers and sisters, it is up to us to live out the gospel in a way that shows people what God wants and what God is doing. The sacrament that we are about to share is designed to nourish us for this work, to help us live out the gospel and to give people a holy vision of who God is and what God is up to in this world. Amen. Let us stand together and join voice in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling, let us offer our prayers to God. Today, we offer prayers for the needs of our parish, particularly those who are ill or in any kind of trouble. We want to pray for Ellen, Ray, Sharon, Mark, David, Barbara, Luann, Connor, Kevin, Marlon, Colonel Benjamin, Reverend Everett Walk, and Dabney, and our own Ginny. For those who have died and their families that mourn, for those celebrating birthdays, including Elizabeth Webster and Bob Bristol, for those celebrating anniversaries, including Linda and Phil Stapleton, for those who serve in the armed services on our behalf, including David, Aaron, Eric, Austin, Greg, Brenton, Amanda, Cord, Kareem, Samuel, J.D., Trenton, Caleb, and Trey. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts with praise.
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your beloved Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven.
Standing or kneeling, let us join in the join voice in the post communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcement time. I'm not sure who's making these announcements. I've got, I've got a couple. Um, one is that we are going to uh, have a, a brief class today about Caesarea Philippi, the city the furthest north in Galilee that Jesus seems to have traveled. Um, so that'll begin um, well, about 10 minutes after the service ends. Um, also, we're planning to have no 8 o'clock service next Sunday because on the Feast of Pentecost, everybody's invited to 
come at 10 o'clock and wear red, right? right. And uh, they're going to be red hangings and maybe some red and gold balloons, all kinds of wonderful decorations, and a band. How many guys? Six or seven. Six or seven in the band. So as you can imagine, it is, we are really going to rock. So fun, fun stuff next Sunday. Um, however, um, instead of restarting that 8 o'clock service in the following Sunday, we talked with the 8 o'clockers today about giving up that service for the summer, and they were okay with that, and they said, we might actually come to 10. So um, I, think, I think that will work. Anybody else have input about whether or not that's okay to call off that service in the summertime? I, I do. Um, you will notice that today I did not wear my mask. Um, I'm quite faithful about that most of the time, but the bishop has stated that if you're fully vaccinated and you're comfortable with not wearing it, then you don't have to wear it in church anymore. It's up to you, 100%. Also, you'll notice that the uh, little lines and for separation um, have been taken off except for a few uh, pews that if you want to remain distanced, you are welcome to do that also. Um, did I cover? Does this mean that uh, we'll be able to sing on the Pentecost? I believe Sunday? that means we can sing. Okay. <laughs> you know I'm a little Miss Singer uh, and a little Miss Dancer. Uh, next week we're going to have quite the celebration, so please come. Um, is that everything? Yes. He, he's looking surprised like he didn't know <laughs> this was going to happen. <laughs> That's great. Happy birthday. So, that'll be right, right after church this morning. Um, personally, I am only going to wear my mask when I'm really close to people, but I have been double vaccinated and um, feeling much more confident about going without it, at least when we're, you know, at a, at a safe distance. So any other announcements that need to be made? Um, did you want to say anything about Pastor Ginny or I guess I kind of did. Yes, even though she's in the hospital, um, Jenny is feeling very hopeful, <clears throat> and she's excited that uh, this may be the beginning of a whole new phase of her health, so she's excited. Okay, I think that's it. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>